How's it going, guys? So today I'm continuing my series on talking about some really cool tools that I find just randomly on the internet. Uh, this one I found from Twitter, and it's called a Spaceship Generator. Essentially, it's an add-on that allows you to iterate very easily and make different spaceships with one click. Uh, variations are infinite, uh, but it's enough of an intro. Let's go ahead and show you how it works. All right, so if you want to grab this add-on, you can get it. It is linked in the description, and you just install it through the, app, um, through the zip file, very standard. And then what you'll do is you'll just hit Shift A, go to Mesh, and click on Starship. And then immediately you are greeted with something really cool. Now you have this temporary dialog down here where you can click. And um, variations takes about a second, maybe half a second to go through. Uh, but that is, that's that's it. Uh, but it is utilizing geometry nodes. In fact, you can use your own objects. This is using a subset of different objects to mix and match them so there are some collections right here that have those objects so you can swap them out in geometry nodes. And this add-on is very good because it uses design principles. Uh, Gleb Alexandrov did a talk at the Blender conference a while back that talked about this, and this has been discussed by very, various people. Pretty much good mech design or sci-fi design, hard surface, whatever you want to call it, has uh, one key principle among many that really make it look good and basically means one big shape accompanied by a couple medium shapes and then some small shapes. And you kind of, you use that. So you don't want to have just one big shape or one big shape, bunch of little shapes. You want to kind of keep that uniform. And this add-on does that. As you can see right here in the outliner, that it's very intentional. Big objects, medium objects, smaller objects, and then booster objects right here. So they keep design in mind with this add-on. So what you'll do is you'll go over to the modifiers and you're going to see all of these geometry nodes setups right here. So you can go in, dig through them, do some cool stuff. Um, I've kept it at default because really they do all the work for you. There's no real, no real need to meddle with it until you want to go and add your own object. So right here, you'll get seed. And because it is modular, it's procedural, um, clicking away doesn't mean you can't edit it anymore. So look at that. So we have already these really cool pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to land on one that I really like, and then we're going to move on and let's make a material. It comes with a material, but that material is image based. So if you are planning on baking out these models, um, either to sculpt on top of them or just use them as a reference for your own modeling, you can uh, with that image texture. But I like to keep everything within Blender and you can also bake procedural materials. So I'm also going to make a material on top of this. All right, so we're going to settle with this. This is it. Now, any of you who've been modeling before, you know that just from the look of this, this certainly isn't good as a final product. Like, oh, it's done. Um, what this is really good for is a couple things. One, concept art. You can take this and then model your own thing from there. You can sculpt on top of this. Um, also, if you convert this to just one mesh, you can decimate it and use it as background elements. Um, so you can just infinitely create all these different background uh, elements for a sci-fi design. Um, things like if you see Ian Hubert doing um, things like that, where it's really cool, where you don't need to see sharp detail, but having good variation and really cool kind of sci-fi design is beneficial. So I know some people are going to gripe about the fact that this isn't like perfectly good, done, finished quality. That doesn't mean it's not useful. And I think this is actually very useful, especially for concept art design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a new starship and we're going to pick a design. I'm just going to go ahead and quickly pick one here and get a material going for this. So we're going to design a material. I really like this one. It looks kind of like a submarine. So first off, uh, before we make our material, for those of you uh, real-time materials users, I would suggest the in the metal category, the sci-fi metal right here looks really nice on this. So what you can do is you can just go ahead and straight and apply it there. And then here I would definitely make the shapes smaller, maybe at like a two. And then of course make that roughness scale much higher as well, just to make this thing look big. Um, maybe even that dense scale smaller, you know, just really up to you. Um, and then if you want a more shiny material, maybe with a little bit of glowing on it, flat tech is a good one as well. And then of course make everything considerably darker just to give it that whole sci-fi look. And then everything can be bigger, smaller, also looks really nice in Eevee, just for more chaotic, like Greeble look. Um, definitely my favorite is this one here. Now let's go ahead and build a material outside of this. So 
what we're gonna do is we're just click new, go straight to shading. We're gonna make a more simple material. And sci-fi materials is definitely a category um, I'm working to add to uh, real-time materials to get a lot more, and this is definitely one of them that's gonna be added. So first we're gonna go, go in metallic here, and then let's get a color ramp and uh, play with our roughness with a noise texture here. And I'm hit Control T with that Node Wrangler add-on enabled. I'm gonna plug the factor here, and then the color here to the roughness. So first, we definitely wanna make this much darker, much darker material, that was subsurf. Make this a lot darker. And then we're gonna go get our detail to 12, get that roughness very high up, and then we can kinda of crunch this in, crunch that in, and then just bring this up like this. So there we go. Looks really dirty and grungy and gross and that's what we're going to go for. And then we can also go ahead and play with our bump which is really going to sell that sci-fi look. So we're going to go ahead and get a bump node here. Plug that into the normal. Get a uh, Voronoi. Voronoi texture. And then plug that mapping into our vector. Oh, come on now. So plug the mapping into the vector, plug the color into the bump. And we're just gonna go here to Chevy Chev. And then scale that up to just add some really interesting detail. And my cat is joining. I feel like this happens every video. My cat, one of my cats walks into my lap while I'm recording. Uh, but then we now have this. And then what we can do is play with um, having some windows, some really sci-fi looking windows. So what we can do is get a color ramp, get one of these Voronois, plug that color into the color ramp, plug that color into the emission, just like this, definitely scale it up, bring that in, really just to sell the fact that this thing is huge and that we can go maybe with a uh, glowing orange. Boom, now we have windows. And we can even make more windows and then make less of them. You can do that as well. Um, so with that being said, that is the review and kind of overview of this add-on. I think it's awesome, I think it's really cool. They certainly didn't ask me to review this. Um, I just thought it was cool and I thought it'd be great for you guys to know about if any of you would find this useful. Uh, but with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.